we record assets like property, plant, and equipment at cost, uh, or or we mark it down if it's been somehow impaired in some type of way and possibly depreciate if we're talking about something like a uh, property, plant, and equipment. So uh, that impairment, what we're worried about is for something to be recorded on the books as an asset and be overstated. Typically, we're more concerned, of course, with that overstatement of the assets. When we're talking about things that are not tangible, then it's it's uh, riskier for us to basically know when, when something is overstated and not. And therefore, we have these different kind of um, asset impairment tests that are going to be seen. You could see more detail about those types of tests. Uh, with the FASB ASC topic 350. Obviously, these type of issues will be specific to the specific types of intangible assets that are going to be owned by a specific type of company. If we're talking about companies that have movie rights or something like that, clearly they're going to have some specialty area and we can go into those types of intangible assets. If we have other companies that have some kind of trademark uh, situation or if they have some type of technology that is going to be highly valued, and it's being recorded as highly valued, then we want to make sure that it is being properly recorded as well. Auditors often assess the inherent risk of high as high given the factors above. So we might say, hey, the risk factors in these areas are high. There might It depends on the industry as to know how much of these types of intangible assets will be in place once again. And when we see the in, these intangible assets, we'll typically put the risk as high if they're going to be material factors to the financial statements there are things that we're going to want to look into. Now we're going to consider the control risk assessment. So the control risk, the types of controls that are going to be put in place as the auditor, we want to basically be able to rely on controls to some extent that we can, and then consider the substantive tests after the, after the consideration of the controls. So the uh, controls, relevant factors related to them, uh, expertise and experience of those calculating the fair value of the assets. So notice when we think about these intangible assets, it really depends on who is, is the one that's calculating the value of these intangible assets. How did the value of these intangible assets be put on the books? Now, again, it, this will differ with the type of intangible asset, but we want to basically know where the, did this intangible asset come from? Who came up with the calculation? How did it get recorded? So that we can consider if they have the experience and expertise in order to do the proper type of calculation related to them. Controls over the process used to determine fair value measurement, like controls over data and segregation of duties between people committing uh, the entity to purchase and people assigning the valuation. So we want controls over the people that are basically in charge of the purchase of these type of things like uh, intangible assets and the people that have the valuation that are going to be calculating the valuation of them that are going to be on the books. We want to basically have those two things, uh, a segregation of duty there as an internal control factor how how much the business relies on and employs